This is Mike from Fearshop.com. Make sure you like this video and leave your comments. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to set up notifications so you know when the next video drops. Let's get into it. Let's take a deep dive into the seminal horror film Night of the Living Dead from 1968. The importance of this film cannot be understated. George A. Romero brought the dead to life in this iconic zombie movie that spawned many sequels and is known to be one of the best zombie movies ever created. Perhaps second or third only to one or two of Romero's sequels to this film. This is George A. Romero's feature debut. The US movie rating systems was instituted in November of 1968. This film released October 1st, 1968 is one of the last films released in the US without a rating. Now regarded as a classic, the film attracted considerable criticism at the time of its release for its graphic use of gore. Since the film was released shortly before the MPAA's rating system was implemented, children were able to see this very graphic horror movie in theaters. A review by critic Roger Ebert included his concerned observations of the children watching him and being traumatized by an adult horror story they were completely unprepared for. Night of the Living Dead is one of the first films to graphically depict violent murders on screen. It's also one of the first films to have a black person as a main character. This is one of the first films added to the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. It's also the first movie filmed in Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh police provided personnel and equipment. When discussing the film for Bravo's The 100 Scariest Movie Moments in 2004, George A. Romero said that the moment they finished editing the film in Pittsburgh, they put the reels into the cans, threw it in the truck and the car, and drove straight to New York City that night in hopes of having it screened at any willing theater. The film's world premiere was at the Fulton Theater in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on October 1st, 1968. At 8 p.m., admission by invitation only. The film was met with a standing ovation. This is also one of the last big hits of the drive-in era. The film received its television premiere on Creatures Features in 1971, hosted by Bob Wilkins. This is one of the most successful independent movies ever made, made for $114,000, equivalent to $847,400 in 2020. It grossed approximately $30 million, equivalent to over $223 million in 2020, over 263 times its budget. George A. Romero saw very little profit from the film due to his lack of knowledge of regarding distribution deals. The distributors walked away with practically all of the profits. At the time of the film's release, any work that did not include a copyright notice was assumed to be public domain. Since the filmmakers forgot to include this notice, the film slipped into the public domain. It is not until March 1st of 1989 that a copyright notice was no longer required. The music used in the film was in the public domain from a Capital EMI Records high Q stock music library. It was originally used in Teenagers from Outer Space in 1959 and cost the filmmakers $1,500. What became a classic title and simply the reference of the dead almost was not called Night of the Living Dead, as the original title was Night of Anubis, the god of mummification in the ancient Egyptian Kemetan religion. The title was changed once George A. Romero learned that very few people understood the reference. During production, the film's title was still being chosen. The working title was simply Monster Flick. George A. Romero has admitted that Herc Harvey's Carnival of Souls in 1962 was a big influence in the making of this film. The film also basically ripped off Richard Matheson's apocalyptic horror novel I Am Legend. According to George A. Romero, the film was originally 10 minutes longer, but the distributor pressured him to cut it down. There are two known deleted scenes that were removed at the insistence of distributor Walter Reed organization. They include an 8-minute expository scene in the basement between Helen and Harry at the bottom of the stairs, which explains the abrupt jump cut shown, as well as a wide shot of numerous zombies covering the landscape, which was replaced with footage of zombies eating near the end of the film. This footage was presumed lost when a flood damaged a storage facility years later at Image 10 Inc. According to the George A. Romero commentary track on the Elite Laserdisc and DVD versions of the film, the original working print and working elements and materials for the films no longer exist. They were destroyed as a result of a flood that filled the basement where the materials were stored, which was the same basement used in the movie. Columbian Pictures 
was the only major Hollywood studio interested in distributing this film, but eventually passed because it was black and white at a time when movies had to compete with new color televisions. Columbia did distribute the 1990 color remake, Night of the Living Dead, American International Pictures, considered releasing the film, but wanted George A. Romero to shoot an upbeat ending and add more of a love story subplot. S. William Hinsman and Carl Hardman, two of the original $300 investors, were cast due to a shortage of available talent. Another investor was a butcher who provided some blood and guts. There's a couple of things left unexplained in this film. Two that come to mind for me is why it's never explained why the dead body found upstairs in the house never comes back to life. The other is though the radiation of a detonated satellite returning from Venus is theorized to be the cause of the dead rising and attacking the living, the actual cause is never determined. One of the working titles for this film was also Night of the Flesh Eaters. Originally, the beings attacked the characters were extraterrestrial in origin, either aliens or humans possessed by an alien pathogen, presumably covering a NASA satellite returning from Venus. Eventually, it was decided that the dead would rise and devour from the living, <clears throat> presumably due to radiation that was carried by a NASA satellite returning. In the film, the dead are referred to as flesh eaters a few times. The word zombie is never used. The most common euphemism used to describe the living dead is those things, mostly by Harry Cooper, co-producer and the father in the basement. Other characters referred to the creatures as ghouls and flesh eaters. However, the film codified many tropes about zombies that have been used in many movies since, including zombies eating human flesh and that zombies can only be killed by shooting them in the head. When the writers decided to base the film on zombies, they brainstormed about what would be the most shocking thing for the zombies to do to people and decided on cannibalism. George A. Romero originally hired Tom Savini to do makeup effects for this film. The two were first introduced when Savini auditioned for an acting role in an earlier film that never got off the ground. Romero, remembering that Savini was also a makeup artist, he brought his makeup portfolio to audition. Called Savini to the set of the horror movie, Savini was unable to do the effects because he was in the U.S. Army serving as a combat photographer in Vietnam. Savini later appeared in Dawn of the Dead in 1978 and directed Night of the Living Dead in 1990. Dwayne Jones was an unknown stage actor when he was cast in the lead role. Dwayne Jones, who played the iconic Ben, was said to be a tortured soul. As you can imagine, there was a time in the US history where racism was still highly prevalent. In his final interview before his death, Dwayne Jones admitted he had never seen any of the other dead movies nor any other George Romero movie. The character of Ben was originally written as an angry person and a crude but resourceful truck driver. When Dwayne Jones was given the role, he expressed concerns that the character be rewritten to remove some of the anger, such as the scene where Ben hits Barbara, afraid of how it would be widely perceived in the United States at a time to see a black man acting in this way. The nation was still plagued with high racial tensions during the late 60s, the film was released to theater shortly after the assassination of Martin Luther King. Nonetheless, George A. Romero and most of the rest of the predominantly white crew decided against it, thinking they were being hip by not changing it. Years later, Romero lamented that he had not taken Jones's concerns more into consideration and thought that he was probably correct. He's expressed that he wished he could speak with the late Jones again, asking him how he felt about the film's legendary status and believed Jones would say, who knew, and laugh. Dwayne Jones did end up rewriting his character's dialogue. One of the film's most famous elements is its grim ending in which Ben, having survived the night, is shot by the sheriff's zombie hunting posse and thrown onto the fire. At one point, a happier ending for the film was considered, but Jones fought it and won. I convinced George that the black community would rather see me dead than saved after all that had gone on in a corny and symbolic and confusing way. The heroes never die in American movies. The jolt of that and the double jolt of the hero being black seemed like a double-barreled whammy. Judith Ridley, who played Judy, still has her outfit from the film. The pants became her painting pants and her shirt became a dish rag. Screenwriter John A. Russo appeared as the zombie who gets killed by Ben with a tire iron. He also allowed himself to be set on fire for real when nobody else wanted to do the stunt. Romero approved of his co-writer Zombie Walk. I was probably hungover, Russo said. Romero originally wanted to cast Betty Averlin as 
of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood from 1968 as Barbara, Fred Rogers would not allow her to do the film. Night of the Living Dead's co-creators do make cameo appearances in the film. Russo played one of the ghouls who managed to reach into the farmhouse only to be struck with a tire iron, while Romero can be seen in Washington, D.C. sequences as a reporter. One of the original script ideas called for Barbara to be a very strong, charismatic character. Instead, Romero and the producers loved Judith O'Day's portrayal as a terrified young girl much better and edited the script to accommodate the part. The idea of Barbara being a strong central character was revisited in Night of the Living Dead of 1990. The film's first scene, the initial cemetery attack on Barbara and Johnny, was actually the last scene to be filmed. In November of 1967, the actors had to hold their breath to avoid visible condensation in the frosty autumn air. Russell Schreiner's mother owned Barbara and Johnny's car. The cemetery scenes were shot over two days. Someone ran into the car during a break in filming, leaving a dent that was easily visible on camera. George A. Romero rewrote the scene so the car came to a stop after crashing into a tree. George A. Romero chose Evan City Cemetery for the first scene, due largely to its isolated location. The crew didn't want to be interrupted by onlookers or police inquiring about their presence. The cemetery, on top of a hill in a heavily wooded area, allowed them privacy. Ironically, it became a popular tourist attraction and fan destination in the decades since its release. The house used for this film was loaned to the filmmakers by the owner who planned to demolish it anyway. When the production came across the farmhouse location, Romero jokingly stated, well, we can do that for you. Production had it completely cleaned the farmhouse in, in order to make it appear livable. Russo notes the kitchen was the first room they cleaned as they felt a clean place to have lunch was the most important factor to having a workable set. When Ben is nailing wooden boards to the door, small numbers can be seen on them. These were written on the backs of the boards so they could be removed and replaced in between shots, preserving continuity. Some numbers are visible because some of the boards were nailed on backwards. When the zombies are eating the bodies in the burned out truck, they were actually eating roast ham covered in chocolate sauce. The filmmakers joked that it was so nausea inducing it was almost a waste of time putting the makeup on the zombies as they ended up looking pale and sick anyway. Though silly putty and other basic special effects techniques were used, most of the body parts that zombies are eating and other scenes were real internal organs and bones from animals. In the script's original ending, the posse who finds the farmhouse travels through the cemetery scene in the opening moments and they come across the car Barbara drove into the tree and even Johnny's body. Russo points out that this change after he decided to have Johnny come back in the end of the zombie. Much of the dialogue was improvised. Night of the Living Dead was inducted into the Horror Host Hall of Fame in 2011 in the Behind the Screams category for the most hosted film in history. So that wraps this one up. I want to hear from you. Post your thoughts on this video and let me know how Night of the Living Dead impacted your love for horror. That's it for this episode. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you share this video. Make sure you subscribe. But most of all, make sure you keep it horror. Ha, 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 